So you have a basic picture in your head of what solid, liquids and gases look like. Now possibly a more useful kind of model to keep in your head of solids, at least those with a crystalline structure, is to think of them as atoms joined by little springs which can vibrate, because this shows the kind of movement which is taking place within that lattice. Now typically the spacing between atoms inside a crystal is around about 10 to the minus 10 metres, so that's one angstrom. And at room temperature, the vibrations have an order of magnitude of around about 10 to the minus 11 meters. So um, to give you a rough comparison, green light has a wavelength of 500 nanometers, which is of the order of 10 to the minus 7 meters. So these atoms in these crystals and the vibrations are much smaller than the wavelength of light, about a thousandth of the wavelength of light for the spacing. So... This is important for lots of physical applications. So for example, when we're building roads, it's often important to put a gap in the road because on a hot day, a black road surface will heat up a lot. This will cause the material to expand and if there's no gaps in the road, then as it expands, it's going to crack because there's nowhere for that expansion to go. So on a lot of roads you'll see metal plates like this or black shiny lines which are made up of material that can be compressed to stop the road cracking. This also happens in houses. Brick houses being built in climates where there's quite a large variation in temperature often have lines filled with a material that can contract or expand so that as the bricks that make up the house expand there's somewhere for this extra length to go in and so the bricks and the wall doesn't crack. We do have an equation to explain this. This equation is just an approximation so we, we can say that the change in length is equal to the expansion coefficient, alpha. Alpha is different for different materials, and you would be told what it was, um, times the initial length of the material times the change in temperature. The change in temperature can either be in degrees C or kelvins. It doesn't matter because it's a change. The length, it doesn't matter what units you use as long as the change in length and the initial length have the same units. The units for the expansion coefficient are per degree C or per Kelvin. If you want to practice using these equations for higher physics, try problems 1, 2 and 3 in set 4. For normal level physics, try problems 1 and 2 in homework set 4. So this slide shows you some of the expansion coefficients for solids. They're fairly small numbers. You can see that they've got an order of magnitude 10 to the minus 6. So aluminium is 24 times 10 to the minus 6. Concrete is about half that, 12 times 10 to the minus 6. Glass is around 9 times 10 to the minus 6. And you can see what the other values are. So let's have a look now at a object expanding as we heat it. Okay, so let's have a look at a solid, a piece of metal, as we heat it. What I've got here is a taunt wire, and I'm going to run a really high current through that wire. Now, as you probably know, really high currents will heat a wire up. So I'm effectively going to heat this wire. So let's have a look at what happens to it as I do that. So as you can see, the smoke and the wire sagged showing that its length has increased and so it's become less taunt and now as it cools back down you can see it slowly coming back up again. So this is showing you that as it's heated it got longer and then as it cools it gets shorter again.